Welcome to the Practice You podcast. My name is Elena Brower. Let's dive into today's conversation regarding life's myriad transitions and how we refine our responses in our relationships, our wellness, our households, our work, and in our practices. You are invited to learn and love and listen with me. Welcome to Practice You. Welcome back to the podcast. I have a new friend with me today, one whom I deeply respect and admire, whose work is making a huge difference in this fair world, Micah Salaberrios is an expert in the field of nonviolent communication. So get ready, our listener. This is going to be a good one. Mike has been teaching the practice since 2016. He has a passion for improving the lives of others. He wrote one of the top-selling books in relationship conflict resolution called The Art of Nonviolent Communication. He hosts a popular podcast that I really enjoy, The Art of NVC. His belief in the transformative power of NVC has been the driving force behind his work. He's helping people to resolve conflicts peacefully, fostering deeper understanding in their relationships. Mm. Micah is dedicated to spreading the teachings of nonviolent communication to as many people as possible, empowering them to live more fulfilling and harmonious lives. Micah has a Patreon page, which I want to encourage you, our listener, to go to now while you're listening to him. It's uh, for the NBC Practice Group and access to the Art of NBC online course. And that link... Our listener is Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash spell this out, art of N V C. Patreon.com Art of NVC. Welcome, Micah, to the podcast. Thank you, Elena. I am very honored and happy to be here. Um, that was a great intro. Appreciate that. And I'm just happy to mm. share the message with your audience. It's just such a pleasure to have you. I love talking about NBC. I just finished a private mentorship session where I ended up mentoring this woman who's, you know, roughly in her 40s and her 11-year-old daughter and introduced them to the concepts of self-empathy and then giving each other empathy. And it was like, seriously, fireworks coming from the screen, fireworks in our hearts, all three of us, fireworks for the generations that we just repatterned in an hour. Wow. Unbelievable. Yes. You know, you know the effect of this. I would love to find out from you your sort of origin story of how you found NBC and why you're doing this work as your profession. Okay. Well, one, I was working on a documentary with um, my producer and we were working intensely for like six months. Everything was great, but things were starting to go bad. She had made like this choice with the film and it was just, I thought it was horrible. I thought it was a terrible choice. I thought I was going to ruin the film and I just didn't like the direction the film was going in. I was just like basically thinking like, oh, I got to go, you know, I got to leave. You know, I was passionate about the project, but I was kind of holding it. I wasn't really communicating well. And then she said, uh, are you upset because you would like more appreciation for your unique talents that you're bringing to the project? She said something along those lines. Oh my gosh. And I was like, tears just came to my eyes. Yeah. We resolved it like, very rapidly and got to the great conversation. And then later she was like, I was doing NVC. I was like, what is that? I'm going to learn it. <laughs> what is that? Oh my God. What a gift. Yeah. What a lifetime gift. I want to point out for our listener that we're sort of skipping over a lot of stuff and we will go over some really good NVC uh, information and teaching during the course of this podcast, but skipping all the way over to NVC style appreciation. Why don't we just start there, since we started there, to acknowledge someone's need for appreciation and encouragement and uh, recognition, acknowledgement, is such a gift that you can give to somebody right now, today, mm -hmm. that you can walk over to somebody in your life, somebody close to you, preferably, because it's really fun to do when you don't want to do it. Oh, yeah. It's really fun to do when it's not expected. And just say to them, just like she said to you, like, would you like to be recognized for the unique talents that you're bringing to this project? You know, you can say to your spouse or your roommate, you know, hey, 
I just want to recognize the fact that you took the trash out three weeks in a row without saying anything or asking for anything. I want to thank you for your diligence and your care in this house. Wow, that's beautiful. You know? Right? Something specific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it changed your life. It changed the flavor of the project, for sure. Mm -hmm. It kept you in the project, and then it changed your entire career. It did. One sentence. Yeah. And that specifics, being specific is so much more powerful than being vague. Just like, thank you for your care, but no, thank you for your care for taking the trash out three weeks in a row and not even saying anything. About it. That specificity is truly mm. powerful. It's everything. Now let's back up and let's go to what NBC is really, really here to do, which is to help us resolve conflict. But this is really important. And I want to start here with you, Micah. It's not just to resolve conflict. It's to get to the place where we both realize that both parties in the conflict are probably having the same exact need. Okay. Let's flesh that out a little bit. When you think about, let's say, even political, let's just go there. Mm -hmm. What the hell? Okay. Uh, a Republican and a Democrat, yeah. you know, both parties are having the same exact need. They want to feel safe, mm -hmm. they want to feel protected. And a future for the children. And they want to have a safe future for the kids. And the Republicans want it this way, and the Democrats want it this way, but they both have the same need. Yeah, they just have different strategies to achieving that. Correct. And let me just take a moment to honor my teacher, Judith Hanson Lassiter, who is a student of Marshall Rosenberg's, who really is the founder of NBC. She spent more than a decade studying with him very closely. She has changed the flavor of my family. She has changed everything about how we communicate, everything about how we look at each other, everything about how we share our news with each other. Her work has empowered me to make these changes in my household. I'll never stop thanking her. But Judith always says this when she's teaching. I'm her sort of tech geek when she teaches the bigger courses online. We do this once a year together, 16 hours of NBC. And she always teaches that we mistake strategies and needs. Mm. Mm -hmm. I wrote this down to talk to you about because I do think this is an important topic. And I thought it might be nice to hear at this juncture, start by teaching our listener who might not have any clue about NBC, nonviolent communication, the four steps in giving oneself empathy and giving another empathy. Does that feel good to you? Yeah. I would say the four steps of NBC – because and then there's emergency empathy and they they work together they're of the same but they are distinct and you use them at different moments and for different various reasons. I want to hear you. Let's okay. go. Okay, so the four steps of nonviolent communication. First is going to be a problem, right? <laughs> there's an issue. There's some kind of issue that's going on. So you want to identify the issue and bring it up using only like observable facts, no opinions. So you just describe what happened as if you're a reporter unbiased, just factual. The trash is left out. There's clothes on the floor. You're 20 minutes late. You don't want to imply that anyone is bad or wrong. In each step, that is really the key. That's the key fundamental. Do not imply someone is bad or wrong. Uh, it doesn't help, and it just makes things a lot harder, and it's not necessary to get what you want, which is usually you know draw some boundary or, or get one of your needs met. So the first step, bring up what's bothering you, using only observable facts and no opinions and don't imply they're bad or wrong. Second step is to express how you are feeling in this moment or about this situation. And every step is basically simple, but it's even more simple to get it wrong. So a lot of things sound like feelings, but they're not feelings. A feeling is one word. And if you're alone on a desert island, it's something you can feel. So you can feel sad, angry, lonely, um, bitter, but you can't feel disrespected. You can't feel, you know, mistreated. It was, a lot of times we'd be like, I feel disrespected, but that's not a feeling because that implies someone's doing something to you and they're bad and wrong and you're a victim. And this is the long, unproductive way of thinking about it. But you could say, I am upset or I am angry because I do not like to be talked to this way. Or I am upset when I hear you call me this name, you know? So that's the second step is express how you feel. And one other note on that is, if you ever try to express how you feel and you go, I feel as if you don't care about this relationship, I feel as if you're not really listening to me, 
That again is definitely not a feeling. It's a judgment. And again, it's implying that the other person is bad or wrong, which every step of the way you don't want to do. Okay. So first you bring up observable facts. You express how you feel honestly. And the third step is you explain why you feel that way. And why you feel any way is because of your own values. If you really value a clean house, then when you come home and you see there's dirty dishes left over from last night, you're not upset about the dirty dishes. You're upset because you would like a clean house. If someone's late, you're not upset because they're late. You're upset because you value promptness or you value your time. These are little things, but they're so powerful. And NVC really works, but you do have to get all these little things correct. So it does take a little time to integrate this way of thinking um, and speaking. But when you do, it's profound. You know what else, too? It's nice to, it feels like a college education. I've been using this for for almost three years. I'm just starting to feel a sense of fluency around it. Yes. And your values really do matter. What you need really does matter. And there are ways for you as Micah is explaining, to communicate your needs slash values to the other person without feeling wrong for doing so. Yes. And that's what the mastery of this particular practice, it is like, okay, we're going to school, we're going to take this class, we're going to practice these four steps, and it's going to take a few months. Mm-hmm. And by the end of the few months, we're actually going to have some proficiency. It's like a 15-year-old going to driving school. Yes. You know what I mean? My kid knows the rules of the road a lot better than I do at this point because he just went to school for it. So it's like that. There's one fourth step. I'm so excited. And I really appreciate the way that you're explaining this, Micah. There are some differences in the way that I have articulated and understood it. So I'm very thankful for the clarity of your explanation. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. And the fourth step is the specific request. And there's nuances to every step. And I'm being pretty brief here. But you don't want to be vague. So a vague request is, could you be a little more respectful or could you be kinder to your sister? Those don't really mean anything. But if you say, could you not say curse words in the house or could you take out the trash in the next 10 minutes or could you do the dishes right now? That's specific. And you need that level of specificity to get things done. Vagueness might sound right and it might sound like you're getting things done, but it just doesn't work. People go, oh yeah, I'll be more respectful. But then how much more respectful? How can you measure that? How will I know if I'm being, you know, but if you say do not speak, you know, curse words in the house or do not, you know, eat before anybody else says, whatever it is, you got to be specific. So those are the four steps in a nutshell. So I would like to just go in and make some little tweaks on this, not to say that I'm right and you're wrong, just to add some layers of richness to it. Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, identifying the problem is also known for the people who've taken Judith's course or read Judith's book, the observation moment, Mm -hmm. okay? It's like taking a snapshot. And as Micah really beautifully said, it's not about the judgment that you have about what happened. It's as I often explain it, oh, there's the couch. The couch has a few crumbs on it and a blanket that's not been folded yet. To some people, that's a fucking mess. And to other people, that's like just a couch with a few crumbs and a blanket that's crumpled up. You know what I mean? Take the picture and say that's a couch, crumbs, blanket, not quite folded. That's it. It's just an observation. Yes. When you say... That, to me, I feel, and I'm going to include in our show notes for our listener, Micah, if this is cool with you, the feelings inventory and the needs inventory. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we don't know our feelings. Like, here, how about this, our listener? When we go into our needs inventory, you know what your needs are? You have no idea what your needs are for connection, acceptance, belonging, cooperation, communication, closeness, community. That's just the like first five. There are 50, 60 needs on here. Autonomy, choice. In the example that I was just giving you, working with the 11-year-old and her mom, there were so many layers to it, but the kid really needs some autonomy. And the mom really needs to back up and realize that you know, her sort of angst with her own mother is affecting how she's parenting right now. And all of that came to light in two sentences of NVC over the course of an hour, carefully wrought. 
So it's pretty amazing. Um, I'll include the feelings and needs inventory. And then the request, and I'd like to talk about this a little bit with you now to find out what you feel about this. The first thing that Judith has taught to me was you've got to have empathy for yourself. You've got to go through this sentence for yourself when you're having a really rough moment and see exactly what you're going through and acknowledge it for yourself so that you can even have a hope to acknowledge what somebody else might be experiencing. So for example, I always use this one. My kid, 13 years old, he's now 16, 17, awesome communicator. We get along so beautifully now because of all this practice. But when he was 12, 13, he was having a really rough time. He was at the school that wasn't really for him. And he would be like, hey, he would just treat me like a jerk in the car on the way to school say something really like inappropriate. And I don't even know how to say to you how personally I took those sentences and those moments from him, like personally, deeply personally. And he would say these things and I'd be like, oh my God, like somebody stabbed me in the back with a knife. It hurt me so bad. And I relayed this to her and she was like, what if you just gave yourself empathy in that moment? Something like, huh, silently to myself. I wouldn't say it out loud. Gosh, when he just said that, I felt so sad. Oh my God, my need for communication is not being met. How human of me to feel this way. By the time I would get to the end of this sort of moment of recognition for myself, and we'll talk about what you define to be emergency empathy for self or other, I would feel so much better the moment would pass, the intensity and the charge would pass, his mood would change <laughs> right there in front of my face because I didn't respond and I didn't feed the wolf and everything would be better. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. What I'd like to know is, does that moment of self-empathy, which I think precedes all all the rest of the refinements of our communication with others. Does that figure into how you teach? And if so, how does it figure in? Only recently, you know, uh, have I started doing that because it's always a good time to do NVC, but it's not actually always a good time. Sometimes you're at work in a business meeting and your boss says something and it's like, no, you just need to be quiet. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's not time to do some NVC because it's just not appropriate. So in those moments, I realized if you just do emergency empathy on yourself, it's amazing. It's just an emergency empathy uh, is when you guess how you feel and why. So there's just something very soothing about it because as yes. soon as you can identify why you were bothered, you just relax. And then all of a sudden you're just calm, much, much more calm. And you can speak in a clear mind. And it's actually so powerful. and It's a mode of life where it's just empathy first. No matter what happens, your automatic go-to thing is to give empathy to others, to yourself. And that's just a very effective, powerful way to stay calm and cool and be unflappable, really. Mm -hmm. Judith said once that empathy releases the obligatory tension around parenting as well. Obligatory tension, I think, is the, is the word that she used. Like, if you're a parent and you're listening to this, giving yourself empathy in those moments really changes things. And then you're able to give your kid emergency empathy. Oh, my God, it's the best. Because suddenly you're looking at this 13-year-old who is just a total jerk to you. And you're like, oh, my God, he has a test today. His friend is mad at him. Who knows what all is happening? Yeah. Who knows? It's amazing. And that, that's true for everyone with whom you disagree. Everyone who's on the other side, quote unquote, of the fence, they're all having some really, really intense experiences right now. So this is very helpful to me. The um, baseline sort of neutral zone of always offering empathy to self or others is very, very important. And I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah. A couple of notes on emergency empathy. I think it's the most powerful. If there's any takeaway, do this. So when anyone's, you notice someone's upset or you notice yourself is upset, you guess how they feel and why. And the, the key things are you don't have to be correct because you won't be most of the time. Um, and it's going to feel awkward, especially if you're triggered. That's when it's hardest to do. And that's when it's most powerful to do. And you do have to use a real feeling. But when you do it, it's the fastest, most profound, powerful way to de-escalate 
any situation, even from physical violence, just to emotional violence, from a kid to a cop to anybody at any time, emergency empathy, just guess how they feel and why. Are you upset because you think I did it on purpose to hurt your feelings? Or are you angry because you feel stressed about your project that's you're going to be late to, you know, it doesn't matter. And you're kind of like fumbling and just guessing. But when you do that, it just changes the dynamic almost instantly. Well, because instantly that person is feeling the full force of your attention. Mm -hmm. With no judgment. No judgment. And there is nothing more powerful than the full force of someone's attention without feeling judged. I don't think. Wow. The specific guessing is something that I've watched my teacher do just hundreds, thousands of times. So I'm guessing that you feel pretty awkward and pretty embarrassed, pretty ashamed by this. You know, I'm guessing that you feel out of place, lost. I'm guessing that you feel anguished, uh, exhausted by this. And instantly, just to really drive this point home, when you do this, our listener... You can feel their entire central nervous system downshift, like instantly. Yeah. They, they start to feel heard and understood. And you know what that feels like? Mm-hmm. It feels like being loved. Yes. Yes. This 11-year-old, we came to the realization that she just wants a little more affection. She's like a little love bunny. And this is not going to last either. It's like a finite period of time and her parents could just slow the F down and give her a little more affection and she might be much less likely to do the things that upset them, including but not limited to eating the wrong food. Like, it was that simple. She just needs love. It's crazy. Judith talks about how NVC is not a thing you do. And I thought this would be very important to bring up with you, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. She says, it's a shift in consciousness. It really is a way of being. I would love to hear you expound a little bit on this for our listener. Yes. Once you learn these practices and start doing them, you feel and you, and you understand how pointless your opinion is, your unrequested opinion or your judgment. You just realize like it's unbeneficial saying that you're wrong or you're bad or you're too this or you're too that. It has a frequency. Whenever any opinions and judgments have this frequency that stimulates our ego and makes us feel right and the other person wrong and almost always like irritates the other person or offends them and, and brings way more separation than connection. And after you do NVC for a while, you realize you don't need that. And you start looking at the world minus your opinions and judgments. And then you just observe it. And instead of an opinion or judgment, you have preferences. I prefer this, you know, it's just a whole different frequency and life gets easier. All your relationships get easier because you stop needlessly triggering people when you're not even thinking about it. You think it's normal. Okay. A hundred people would agree to me that, that he's a jerk. You don't really ever need to say that. You know what I mean? You could say he's violent. Maybe the person was violent or, or, or something that you could speak specifically about. And then it's not a judgment and it has a different frequency. So that's like the first step, just erasing opinions and judgments from your whole vocabulary. And life gets a bit easier. Uh, My entire skin is tingling. I spent a month uh, in meditation with my teacher here in Santa Fe, and I started to understand that for the first time, you know, without even hearing you say that sentence. But now that you've said that sentence, I have new thoughts about it. But sitting and watching my thoughts for almost five to seven hours a day, a couple days, eight, I saw all those opinions and judgments makes me cry when I think about it because they were so draining. Yes. Everything was an opinion and a judgment. Everything was stealing my life force, all of these words and these phrases. And finally, I was like, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of all of this. I'm so tired of all these opinions. By like day seven or eight, I just was like, okay, I'm letting all of these opinions sit outside the Zendo with my shoes. And I'm just going to sit in there and be with the world, minus all of that. Yes. (laughs) Oh, to hear you say that, it just like put words to it finally. And I'm trying to, um, to learn how to offer that to my dear partner 
He grew up with a lot of opinions and judgments, and uh, he is also finally coming to understand how busy it keeps him and how July force it takes from us. So I want to just say that out loud, looking at the world minus our judgments and opinions and moving into a more sort of factual, similar to the observation that we just described, identifying the problem. It's just a preference and it's just a factual event that's happening. That person is expressing violently. I don't have to call him a name. Mm -hmm. You know, I can send him empathy. Yes. Yes. It's a wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that's the shift. That's like the way of life. The empathy first is another, like, that's like, the, I think the next step. Anytime you see somebody acting out, if your go-to first is empathy, you are just a, a walking, like, you have a love gun. And everywhere you go, you just shine love and instantly heal with just that. It's what my teacher is. She's 80 years old. She spent her whole life trying to work on this. It's evident in her writing and in everything that she does and every move that she makes. You know, and she'll say, oh, I fail all the time. But the truth is, she is a walking example of this state of being. And she's a safe place to land because of it. Like, I know what she's up to at any given time. It's a real honor to talk to you about this. I don't have many friends who have gone so deeply into NBC, and I really appreciate all of your insights today. And I would love to know if you would like to talk about, I really like to promote my guests and their work so that our listener can consider working with you. I'd like for you to talk very specifically about what it is that you do what it is that you teach, and how you serve your community on Patreon. And I have one more question after that. Okay. Um, you know, Marshall created this, and I think it was awesome. And I kind of updated it and shortened it, you know, because he wrote it 30, 40 years ago. Not exactly, maybe 50 years ago, I'm not sure. Um, and so I provide like a more updated and just my own take on it, because a lot of people I would see doing it incorrectly in the same ways. So I wrote a book about it, The Art of Nonviolent Communication. It's a short book. It's like a condensed, very like dense read. And I have my podcast, The Art of uh, NVC. And I just basically give you everything, my all, all my understandings on that. And it takes to really utilize nonviolent communication. You need to first learn the principles. That's what the book, Marshall's book, my book, and the podcast is for. But then you need to practice because you're going to make mistakes and it's going to be painful. You know, you're using NVC in general with your loved ones and it's intense and you're trying to do it and it feels awkward. And then you try it and you get it wrong and things get worse. Like sometimes when you clean your house, you know, in the middle of cleaning, your house is messier than ever. So learning NVC, sometimes you're going to make things worse. Uh, but that's the temporary stage. It's natural. It's part of learning. So I have the uh, Patreon so where I host a practice group. So you can come, you can join. I have a bunch of scenarios and I will guide you through it. So you get reps on what it's like. And it's amazing how real these scenarios feel. You know, you get triggered. It's still hard to do. But after a while, you will really be able to start utilizing this very skillfully in your world. And I needed this really bad because in my household, it was a verbally abusive household. I mean, you know, my mom loved us, but uh, it was verbally abusive. And so... I needed to learn it, I, and I learned it well. I understand it well. And so I just like sharing it. I just want to share it with the world. I would love to share it with schools and organizations, and I'm starting to do that. Um, I would love to do that more. Micah, maybe there's a way for you and me to do that in some way for certain schools where the two of us can enter into a space, even virtually, and kind of toss things back and forth and be an even more layered experience of it. If you'd ever be open to that, I'm super keen. I would love to do that. That sounds amazing. Me too. Me too. Um, I just want to say one more thing that the emphasis on the practice is really important. And so if this is your first exposure to NBC, our listener, and you really want to practice, I do believe that Micah's Patreon is the best place in which to do it. 
This is a technology of intimacy and compassion. This is a technology of closeness. And it's something that we all need, desperately need. I would love to maybe even consider doing a part two to this, Micah, where we come up with a few scenarios. Maybe even we survey our listener and find out what scenarios they would like to sort of get more clear on. That would be great. And walk through them. That could be really cool yeah, too. I agree. All right. I'm thinking about all of this. So you have the Patreon, our listener, and that Patreon is patreon.com forward slash art of NVC. Just one word. Mm -hmm. The podcast is the art of NVC, of course. And um, I think I have a website my last... to the art of oh, yeah. the art of NVC.com. The art of NVC? Yeah. Okay. So T H E A R T O F N V C.com. Yes. Excellent. The last thing I would like to talk about is your current relationships. I hear you have folks in the background. It's very sweet. Um, in your past relationships, when you feel like you were not knowing how to communicate and this was not yet in your life, can you point to how this understanding of NBC has improved? Just name one relationship that you know has come from the past into the present that has changed because of NVC? I would say the relationship with my mom uh, has definitely changed because I used to get so easily triggered that we couldn't even really be around each other. And now I could just go into emergency empathy or I just don't get triggered because I don't offer my opinion and I just go into emergency empathy if, if she's triggered about something. And it would, used to last days, maybe weeks or hours, you know, just like a minute and we're, we're laughing, giggling. You know, it's like a, it's effortless now. I would like to do an example of that. So um, name something that used to trigger you that your mom would do that now is very easy to apply emergency empathy to and transform it. She would get very upset about things. And then I would get annoyed that she would get so upset about something that to me would be irrelevant. But that's my judgment. So instead of like judging it as wrong to get so upset, I'll just go, are you upset because of... You know, and I would just like do it. And I'm usually wrong, but just that process. Emergency empathy usually takes a few rounds. Um, but every round, things get calmer and calmer. And now it's just like, I can't even remember the last time actually we had a, a, a strong disagreement. Um, mm. Yeah. This is wonderful. I just want to give a shout out to my kid, Jonah, who doesn't really know NBC yet, but I'm going to have him listen to this podcast. And I want to say, this used to happen. It happens much less. But I also used to get really upset about things in a way that was incommensurate with his valuation of the moment. I want to acknowledge that. And I want to say, I'm glad that I'm getting better at this. And I think this will only continue to improve in the future as I give myself empathy instead of instantly becoming upset externally by something that's completely manageable internally. Yes. Wow. I'm glad I asked that question. It's very personal, but I'm really grateful for your answer and your honesty because it just helped me. When you were talking, I was imagining that it was he, my son, who was talking. And it was really helpful. We're all the same in the end. We have the same beating, four-chambered heart. We have the same cells and bones and organs and... You know, we're shaped by our environment. And if we can be shaped by the environment, then we can reshape it. <laughs> we're water, basically. I love that. Yeah. And I think one thing that Judith also has said so many times, she said, transformation only happens in the present. It doesn't happen in the future. So we can read all we want. We can study the shit all we want. But if we're not practicing communicating with the people in our lives using these principles, it has no effect. It has to happen in the present. Yes. Don't put it off. Tick tock. The clock is ticking. Tick tock. The clock is ticking, <laughs> bitches. It's ticking. I can't even thank you enough. I, I cannot say how much I learned from you here and how much I respect the work that you've done and the time that you've taken. You know, people have ideas all the time about what they should and could be doing. And you, you made it into a real presence 
virtually and in person. You made it into a real body of work, a book, a whole world. And I'm so proud to know you and to have you on this podcast and to maybe someday, if we're really lucky, to do the work together in some capacity. Like, how cool would that be? That'd be amazing. It's definitely an honor to be on your platform. And I really appreciate your love and care. And I can obviously, you've been working for a long time on yourself in all these ways. So I'm just honored to uh, meet you on this path of self-realization and self-healing. Yes, me too. I'm thinking now out loud that I'm going to include maybe some of this work in schools and stuff as part of my Buddhist chaplaincy program project. I don't know. This is a possibility. I'm going to see if that's possible. I start that in 2024 and 25. So let's see. This could be a real service. Amazing. Yeah. Um, Micah Salaberrios. Thank you so very much. The Art of NBC.com, Art of NBC on Patreon. You are a gift to this world, my friend. And thank your mother for me. <laughs> Will do. And thank you so much. Mm-hmm.